Hey guys, my name's Chris, and I'm here with the Q Center today to explain one of the particularly tricky series convergence tests, the integral test. Here we have a list of some of the tests that we might perform to see if, an, if a series converges or not. So we have the geometric series test, which you probably know, the P-series test, and the divergence test, and so on. These are all the tests that UConn teaches, and I know many other colleges also teach those, but there are a few more that we don't go over. We will also be releasing another video in which we cover these more comprehensively, but we're gonna focus in on the integral test today. So here we have our standard definition of what it means for a series to converge, and it means that the sequence of partial sums converges as the limit goes to infinity which you see right there, the limit n goes to infinity of Sn, our sequence of partial sums. And then following that, we have right here the integral test, which has three criteria that need to be met in order to perform it. The function that represents our series must be continuous, positive, and decreasing. And further, we have here that if the series converges, the integral will converge, but more importantly, if the integral converges, the series converges, and if the integral diverges, then the series diverges. We also have at the bottom the remainder formula, which can be used when calculating error. So one of the tests that we may need to use integral tests for, because we don't know if it converges or diverges, is 1 over n ln of n. So if I was looking at this and I got this and I had no idea what to do, I'd probably start with the divergence test. So for the divergence test, all we need to do is see if the sequence converges to zero. And if it does, then we can't conclude anything. If it does not, then it diverges. So we'd have one over n ln of n, which is increasing function on the bottom, so it goes to zero. We cannot conclude that it converges from this or diverges, but we can do further tests to figure out more. So one of those tests would be the limit comparison test. And when we do the limit comparison test, we have to compare our series, 1 over n ln n, to another series, let's say bn, which will equal the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. The reason why I chose this series to compare to is because we know that 1 over n diverges and I have a feeling that 1 over n ln n may also diverge. But we don't know that yet. So what we do when we perform this is we take our original series 1 over ln of n and we divide it by our other series 1 over n and recall that we're also taking the limit here goes to infinity. So we get by division of fractions like this, n over n ln of n limit as it goes to infinity. And then we get from there that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over ln of n, we get that this is going to equal 0 since ln of n is an increasing function. So we can neither conclude that this diverges or converges from our limit comparison test. So we just got that the limit comparison test failed. So it looks like we're going to have to move on to that test I mentioned earlier, the integral test. The first thing we need to do to integrate is we need to model our series as a function. So what we have is f of x is going to equal 1 over x ln of x as our function. And our bounds are going to be just the same as our bounds of our series, 2 and infinity. So now to perform the integral test, we have three criteria that have to be met. We have that it has to be positive, the function that is. 
which 1 over x ln x is because there are no negative terms. It has to be continuous, which is a little trickier because we have normally 1 over x ln x might give us some problems if we start at 0 or 1 because then we get division by 0, which would not be continuous. However, since we're starting at 2 and going off to infinity, 1 over x ln x is continuous. And finally, decreasing. And our function 1 over x ln x has a quotient that is continuous, like we mentioned, and it's also increasing. Therefore, the overall function is decreasing. So now we move on to performing the actual integral. We have the integral from infinity to 2 of 1 over x ln of x dx is an indefinite integral. So what we have to write it as is the limit as b goes to infinity of b to 2 of 1 over x ln of x dx. So that's what we're going to be integrating. Now let's move on to the actual integral. We see here that just doing a normal integral by like power series or one of those easier tricks isn't going to work. So we actually have to use u substitution. So let our u equal, hmm, we're going to have to let our u equal ln of x, which means that our du is going to equal 1 over x because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x dx. So now, performing our substitution, we get the limit as b goes to infinity of b to 2 of 1 over u times du. Now all we have to do is do the actual integral, easy enough here. We get 1 over u turns into the limit as b goes to infinity of ln of u with our bounds 2 and b. Now performing our final substitution, we get the limit as b goes to infinity of ln of ln of x. Remember our bounds, 2 and b. So right now it looks like we're probably going to get this to diverge, but we still have to perform that final test, which is our subtraction step. We have that the limit as b goes to infinity of ln of ln of b minus ln of ln of 2 is going to equal infinity. And we know that because ln of ln of b is an increasing function. We plug in infinity, we get infinity, and the ln of ln of 2 becomes insignificant. That's right there is the integral test. And remember that we've now concluded divergence by integral test. I hope this video was helpful and if you ever need any questions answered or help on your math homework, feel free to stop by the Q Center.